Hey, it's Jeff Sauer here from analyticscourse.net, and I want to talk about calculating goal values in Google Analytics. This is a question that I get all the time from my students at Analytics Course who want to know what value they should put in for the goals that they have in their analytics account. This is a great question because the answer really depends on how your business operates. There's really no one answer that you can put in there for a goal value, but the value you choose has a lot of impact. And so I've developed many frameworks over the years to help you calculate that value, basically choosing either your overall conversion rate and your cost per sale if you have an e-commerce site, or taking a look at your lead generation efforts, understanding your lead close cycle, and using that to build a value that works for your conversion. And I really enjoy investigating and figuring out these values for businesses. And so I put together this video to show you the process that I go through to select goal values for just about any type of website. If you have ever set up goals within your Google Analytics account and paused at the goal value and wondered what you should put in, you're going to love this video because we're going to answer that question once and for all. Let's talk about goal values in Google Analytics. I'm going to go out on a limb in the start of this video and I'm going to assume that you've set up goals in Google Analytics, right? Well, this is when I'd normally reprimand you if you haven't set them up yet, or I'd say something silly like, don't watch this video if you haven't created goals yet. I'd be all mean and condescending and say, hey, you know what? You need to set up goals before you can even watch this video. And that's something that the old Jeff would do. I used to do that back in the day. I'd say, you need to do these things in order, or you need to do it in the exact way that I tell you, or things are cut and dried and it's just easy, so why don't you do it? But now I'm older and I'm starting to see some gray hairs come in and I'm going to empathize first. And not only that, I'm going to level with you. Sometimes setting up goals is not as easy as the talking heads make it out to be. And in this case, I'll throw myself in as one of those talking heads making it sound like it's easy. Because goals in Google Analytics are sort of stupid. And sort of stupid is my Minnesota nice way of saying they are very dumb and they haven't changed much over the years, and they sort of suck. They're rigid. They assume that all websites work the same way. There's only four options for how you can set up a goal, and those options represent a paradigm of how every website operated back in 2006. And you see here there's a destination URL where you put in the URL of a thank you page, who does thank you pages anymore? Other than me, of course, because I'm an analytics purist. You can do it duration or based on number of pages or screens per session. Something that I recommend that nobody ever does unless you have a publisher or a gaming website, something where you need to have these different screens showing up. Or you can track it by an event, which is when somebody does something within a page, which is something that can be used occasionally. But those are the goals that you have in Google Analytics. And they sort of suck. They really do. The reason why they suck is that Google asks for information that we don't always know. Information we may never have available in our roles in our organizations. If we're just a lowly analyst or a marketer, we don't always know what our close rates are from our sales team. We can try to find those numbers, but people aren't always forthcoming with them. And so Google's assuming that we have the information we need to do our job or that our internal politics aren't messed up. But that's not the case never the case. And so Google puts basically a gun to your head saying either put no value in there or know the value before you want to continue on with your goals. And so while setting up goals is technically easy, getting your company to agree on the numbers and the goals, that's another story. Now I did put out a video about setting up goals in this very here space, and you can check it out at the URL on the screen right now. But in that video, I skipped over creating goal values. Actually, what I did is I put in a number of what I believe was $10 million for that goal. Fortunately for myself, I didn't save that, so I don't actually have my website showing that every one of you who clicked on that URL made me $10 million. But you can see here, I just skipped over the goal value, and I said, I'll, I'll cover that in another video. And that's true, because goal values do deserve their own video. And that's what we're going to talk about right now. What value should you put in for your goals? And this stems from a question from Adnan from our analytics course forums. He says, in terms of assigning a value to a goal, if you have an e-commerce site, couldn't your goal be the purchase of that product? 
For instance, could one of the goals for the Jefflytics Analytics course be the purchase valued at $500? Yeah, absolutely, it should be that, right? If that's what somebody paid for on the e-commerce site, then that should be the value. But is that really how goals work in Google Analytics? Let's discuss. First, let's look at the Google definition. Google says that for your goal value, and you can read this yourself if you'd like to, that you should put in the value of what's going on. And so they basically tell you to do some math. They say that if you have a newsletter subscription and your close rate is 10% on that newsletter and your average transaction is $500, then you should assign $50 as the goal of a newsletter signup. And that's okay. And this is all the guidance they give you. And it's actually not wrong. And it doesn't go against what I recommend, but it's not very much to go on. And so I wanna spend this video talking about where we can take this. Now there are many values that we can enter into our goal values. We could do the maximum product value of all the products in our catalog. That could be the value that we put into our goal. We could say our average order value. We could say the minimum order value, like the minimum amount that we put into an order. We can say the average lead value, the average value we get for every lead we generate. We could do the cost per lead target. So whatever we're targeting as our cost per lead, we could do that. We could put an arbitrary number in there, which is what a lot of companies end up doing. They just put in some kind of number. Hey, let's just settle on something, even though it's not the right number. Let's just choose something. I don't really give a crap. I'm sick of arguing about this at this point. That's what your company might say, of course. I'm not getting sick of you. You could put no value at all, which I don't really recommend. Or you could put in the perfect value, which probably doesn't exist. And that's why I crossed it out because you shouldn't be looking for a perfect value. It probably doesn't exist. Now, before I tell you the right value, here's some considerations you should take into account. One, goal values are static except for event goals. And so whenever you put in a value in a goal, it's static. So if you put $5 in, every time that somebody hits that goal, $5 is what gets triggered. It's not dynamic based on any other property other than the number you put in there. And that's especially true for destination goals or the goals you put in there for number of page views or time spent on your site. As you can see here in an event goal, you can use the event value as the goal for the conversion. So that's cool for events, but it doesn't really help us out for everything else because events don't let us do funnels. Events don't let us do all these awesome things around conversion tracking. Events are a pretty minimal way of doing conversion tracking. Number two, goal values are permanent and they don't update dynamically or change proactively. So if you put in a goal value of $10 million like I did, that's permanent. Once somebody reaches that goal, it stays there. It gets stuck in Google Analytics and you can never get that out. So if you put in a really bad value or an arbitrary value, it's stuck. You just permanently modified the data of your account. And if you did a bad job, if you did the wrong values, then you just put in junk in your system that you're never gonna be able to get out and you're gonna to have to explain it, you're gonna to to tell people why you did it and account for it. Number three, your goal value is assigned for every session that reaches that goal destination. So every single time that somebody reaches that destination URL, the goal value is assigned. Do you want that to happen? Do you want somebody to get that value over and over again or is it really meant to be more of a one-off? Is it meant to be something that's a lower number or a higher number? Knowing the fact that every time that somebody reaches this destination, a goal value is assigned, how does that change your way of thinking? Number four, Google does not recommend goal values for e-commerce sites. And you can look in their documentation here. They say, for a transaction, turn the goal value off and use e-commerce tracking and reports to see revenue instead. So Google's telling you, don't do this for e-commerce. So for e-commerce, I'd recommend turning the goal value off, but you do want to turn your funnel on so you can view the funnel steps. Now, depending on where you're at in your analytics expertise, you may or may not have set up a funnel. We do set them up inside of analytics course. We show you exactly how these funnels work, how to determine what the steps are. So if you've ever wondered how to set up a funnel, check out analytics course. We can show you exactly how to do it. But for the purpose of this video, we're talking about goal values and not funnels. Number five, goal values must be realistic. And I was gonna say this nicely, but no. This is a must have item. That's why I capitalized the word must. You need to choose realistic goal values. Otherwise your Google Analytics data is worthless. Otherwise you can't trust it. So putting in zero value at all makes your data a little bit less trustworthy, a little bit less useful, but putting a huge value in there, like $10 million, like my example, is not a good idea either. And so with that out of the way, I'm gonna answer Adnan's question. The goal value for my course sales doesn't matter because that would be coming in through the e-commerce tag. So if somebody buys a course, the dollar value of the session happens automatically because I'm using e-commerce reports. 
but goal values do matter for everything else. So let's talk about a few scenarios where you might be putting in goal values and we'll talk about how do we calculate it. What should be the goal value for sales leads? Leads that come in to your sales team. Leads that you talk about that go through an entire sales process. Well, you can calculate your expected results from leads and there's many frameworks to determine this, but we actually have one for PPC course that we've published. It's freely available to you and it's available at jefflytics.com slash google dash adwords dash budget. And you can use this to calculate your close rates, all kinds of different pieces of information you need to determine what the value is for each lead you generate. So in this case, you can see on the screen, we have net revenue per lead. If you put in your own business numbers, you can determine what that is. In this case, it says $1,000, yours might be $1, it might be $1 million, whatever it is. That net revenue per lead is what you would use as a goal value. And this is calculated based on sales numbers and expected close rates by your salespeople. And remember that earlier in this video, I talked about how not everybody has access to this information. So you need to do your best. You really need to either ask people in your organization what the answer is, or you need to find it or come up with the number that you're comfortable putting into the Google Analytics system. What about email subscribers? What should be the goal value for subscribers? Well, the scientific way, very similar to what Google has. The revenue from your emails divided by your total subscribers equals the value per email subscriber. Pretty straightforward. If you have these numbers available, or if you can at least take a snapshot in time as to the last time you sent out an email campaign that was meant to drive revenue, you can figure out this number. The easy way, just put in some kind of number, I'd say five to $10, just some kind of arbitrary number that makes sense that you're comfortable with, knowing that Email subscribers are not the same thing as a sale, but they can lead to sales. And so you have an idea as to what the value of each of your subscribers is. What should be the goal value for tracking engagement? I would say something very low. If you're using event tracking for your micro goals, like watching a video, I would say the value should be $1 at most, zero to $1 because that's gonna assign a proper value because people might watch a lot of videos, but that does not mean that they're making money for you. For example, if you're Netflix, you could have a million of these goals of somebody watching a video, but generally speaking, they're subscribers, so they're not getting any more money per video. Or you'd have to do some advanced analytics to determine for every video watched how much revenue that brings in the door for you. But for everybody else who's doing marketing and lead generation and e-commerce, video watching is not something you wanna assign a lot of value to. And why? Because engagement doesn't make any money, so assigning value is cray. And this is my attempt to try to sound hip and cool, to try to ignore the gray hairs on my head and to try to sound like somebody who's cool. And I don't think it's working out very well at all. But you know what's more cray cray? Assigning no value to goals at all. You need to assign some kind of value to your goal. Please don't do that please do not assign no value to your goals at all. Unless it's an engagement goal that doesn't really mean anything, then that's okay. Otherwise, assign some kind of value. Otherwise, your reports all are terrible. Your attribution models are terrible, no point in doing them. Your multi-channel funnels have no point. Even the page value metric is worthless if you don't have some kind of value in there. So do something, please. And to summarize what we're talking about here, what should you use as goal values? If you have e-commerce, you don't need to put a value in there at all. If you have lead generation for your website, sales lead generation in particular, put the expected revenue for each lead that comes in. Subscribers, like email subscribers, YouTube subscribers, a realistically small number. Engagement, a very low number, possibly even zero, because engagement really doesn't mean much. Yes, it sounds cool. Yes, it's what we use. when We have a lack of better numbers out there, but it's not great. Trust me on that one. So what do you think about goal values? Leave a comment with your questions or strategies on our YouTube channel or on the blog post that accompanies this video.